Hi everyone, welcome to the video. Uh, a while ago I made uh, my stock uh, photography and videography earnings uh, video for the month of August and during that video I said that uh, it cost me around five hours in time to edit uh, a bunch of photos uh, to upload to Wirestock and some other agency and I got a comment criticizing me about that because they the person uh, said that it obviously takes more than five hours to go out, take the photographs or videos, uh, travel time included, and so they have a point. So I thought it would be a good exercise to break down my latest uh, editorial photo shoot and just uh, dissect it to see how much time and money it all cost me. So the uh, photo shoot was in an area, it was roughly 18 kilometers away from my home base in The Hague. Um, and it's an area called uh, Hoek van Holland, a kind of the entrance to the port of Rotterdam. So it includes uh, a big canal going into Rotterdam Harbour. It also includes the harbour called the Maasvlakte on the other side of the water. And it also includes a town called Hoek van Holland where ferries depart from the Netherlands and go to England. So there's a lot of maritime stuff going on in this one place and it's really concentrated. Uh, plus it's also an interesting uh, just region just because there's so much happening in regards to other stock photography subjects. So you've got a mixture of industrial harbour maritime shipping and the usual stuff that goes on in a town or city uh, in the Netherlands. So it was, it's a really good place to really concentrate a bunch of photos and videos for the stock agencies. So just breaking down the costs and the times now, the area I went to is 17 kilometres from my home base in The Hague, uh, south uh, to the Hoek van Holland uh, on the coast and it took me around 25 minutes to get there in the car and cost me four euros 80 in fuel to go there and get back uh, that's according to the anwb uh, which is like the rac uh, for the united kingdom it's uh, it's like the royal automobile club but for the netherlands and you type in uh, your coordinates to that and it tells you how long the journey is and how much it will cost you in fuel. While I was there, I took a ferry that went from the port of Hoek van Holland over the canal or the waterway where the shipping goes to the uh, industrial harbour of the Maasvlakte. And this ferry uh, goes to three or four or five destinations and then comes back to its point of departure. And that ferry cost me $6.50 and I also had to buy a mask which cost me $1.50. And the reason I took that ferry was because it gives me a better uh, point of view of looking at all the shipping and also the, the harbour itself so I can take lots of different uh, photos and videos of different subjects from uh, a point of view that's off from the land, from the waters. A waterside perspective. After I uh, took my ferry ride I came back uh, and I bought uh, some chips for two euros seventy. Chips or potato chips or french fries I think they call them in the US and that was two euros seventy and I provided my own drink so that didn't cost me anything. Um, in total, I was at the location for three and a half hours and uh, then I came back to The Hague and I spent uh, four to four and a half hours uh, editing, captioning and keywording the photos and videos and that included breaks. I think it was two breaks of around 10 to 15 minutes. So that uh, four to four and a half hours and three and a half hours comes to a total of eight hours uh, that it took me to go there, take the photos and images or images and videos, uh, come back, uh, process the, uh, the images or the assets and uh, keyword them. 
So in total that was around eight hours of uh, time or work. And the total cost uh, for getting there and the ferry and the fuel, uh, etc. was 15 euros 50. So in total eight hours of time and 15 euros 50 in costs. Okay, so what exactly did I upload and to which agencies? Uh, so I uploaded uh, 13 images to Wirestock and 8 videos um, and after uh, a week all of the, not all of them, I think two got rejected um, all of the images that got accepted and the videos that got accepted uh, were placed with the different agencies that are signed up with Wirestock so I think it's around 8 agencies, Shutterstock, Adobe Stock, Dreams Time uh, and a few others including Pond5. Uh, so within a week uh, those assets, 11 photos, sorry 13 photos and 8 videos were successfully uploaded to Wirestock and uh, the other photos uh, which was 11 photos I uploaded to Shutterstock, Adobe, Alamy, Deposit Photos, iStock and Dreams Time. Um, they, I think with Shutterstock, uh, two or three got rejected, um, but with the others, most of them were accepted. Except for iStock, they've changed their uh, way of uploading uh, assets to that agency, and for some reason, uh, the total upload failed with iStock. So I have to go back to iStock um, and try and upload again. Uh, all of the photos and videos, including the ones to Wirestock, were captioned and keyworded. So it's now two weeks later since I've uploaded all of those assets and videos. The reason I only uploaded the videos to Wirestock was because uh, I just didn't want to spend the extra time uh, individually uploading the videos to all these different agencies. Um, with Wirestock I can just upload them to Wirestock and they automatically get distributed to these other agencies and they charge me a 15% fee for that uh, service and I thought just to save time it would be worth uh, doing that. The reason I split up my batch between Wirestock and the other agencies was just to not all put all of my eggs in one basket and also just to see which assets would sell first uh, and more of uh, whether it was with Wirestock, Adobe or Shutterstock. Um, so far uh, two weeks later I haven't sold any assets on any of those platforms yet so it's only two weeks it is a waiting game with stock photography so um, in my next uh, earnings income report I'll let you know if I sold any of those uh, assets at all yet. So if anything in this video has been interesting to you feel free to share it to uh, other stock photographers that you know uh, or people who you think may be interested in getting into stock photography or just simply give it a like and that'll help my YouTube algorithm. So even though uh, I haven't uh, had any results yet um, the point of this video is to find out is uh, doing stock photography cost effective and the reason I went to this region was because previously I'd sold uh, quite a lot of images from this region uh, on the stock agencies uh, just with Alamy alone um, I've been there up to two or three times uh, but I've sold one pick of uh, some wind turbines on Alamy just for $63. Uh, I also sold a picture of a fox uh, with a lady sitting on a bench nearby which was taken at where I bought the chips from uh, nearby to there and that sold for $5.70. Uh, I also sold a photo of a container ship up close uh, and that sold for $11.46. I know from memory I've sold dozens of those photos of the fox with the lady across different sites so I think it, it will be cost effective for me to go to places like that uh, in the long run and uh, selling these assets across the different agencies. But 
If you're asking yourself the question, is stock photography cost effective for you? Um, I can answer that question uh, from my experience as a yes. Uh, my top five best-selling uh, images on Shutterstock all come from within 30 minutes of my home and it just costs me time and a bit of fuel uh, to take those photos. In some cases I just rode my bike to the beach um, and I'm walking along the beach during my normal exercise routine and I come up with a photo that pays uh, hundreds of dollars. So for example on Shutterstock alone my top three best-selling uh, photos uh, are of a VW camper that I took that was 20 minutes away uh, from my home and that's NP $601. Uh, there's a dead gannet trapped in plastic lying on the beach and just photos from that on one agency Shutterstock is $280. And a house spider that just crawled onto the bumper bar of my car outside my home, uh, that photo has earned me $69. So if you keep your costs low, look for subjects that are close to where you're based. Uh, you can make money still. Another piece of advice I can give you is even the most average photo can earn you a lot of money but it's not going to earn you anything if you do not correctly keyword it or caption it. Uh, the customer has to be able to find that image. Uh, for example, um, I was in the tram coming home from work one summer's day and I got out of the tram and the light was quite nice and I just saw some weeds growing at the tram stop out of the, the pavement. Uh, so I got down as low as I could. I had my camera with me and I took a photo of these weeds and that weed photo has earned me $17.36 on Shutterstock so far and I know it's sold on other agencies as well. So the most average photo can earn you money but it has to be correctly captioned and keyworded so it can be found amongst all the thousands of other images out there. Well that's it for this video guys. How do you guys go about planning a shoot uh, and working out whether it's cost effective for you? Uh, whether it's an editorial shoot like I did or a commercial shoot. I know the chances of probably selling more are greater with commercial shoots but I think probably the costs are also greater. So I'll be interested to hear about uh, your input on that one and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!